Hey everyone, thanks for watching Pets in a Pod. Today I'm going to be explaining what bioactive means in some easy terms. Well friends, I apologize for the wonky lighting. Um, I am under a light, but I'm also trying to light this so that way you can see it. So. Uh, I might end up looking very pale, but I'm gonna just be fine with that because I this is the important stuff here. So what I'm actually doing is I am setting up an upgrade enclosure for my green keel belly lizards, which are known as Gastrophilus prasina. Uh, I do have a care guide on them. I have their original um, original cage build. I've got a couple videos on them, but they are getting an upgrade. I only do have two, but they're upgrading to this. 36 by 18 by 36, which is double the space they're currently in. And I am getting a third one um, this next week here. Uh, there, I will be adding a female to the pair, so that way I will have a male to female trio. So this is what I uh, did for this upgrade. The uh, My theme, of course, was still tropical, but this time I really played up the vines and the pieces of cork that actually come off the back. So let's go ahead and get to the bioactive stuff then. When you do a bioactive vivarium, what that be means is bioactive is, for most people, in simple terms, it's just when you add a cleanup crew, aka beneficial insects, to the enclosure and live plants. So in any tropical tropical is the keyword, tropical bioactive vivarium, you're gonna want a drainage layer. For desert bioactive, people tend to skip this because with a desert, you don't have the same amount of water that's gonna be running and cycling through your tank. So with a tropical vivarium, you it's tropical. So you're gonna have a lot of water usage, a lot of water going through. And for that reason, you need a drainage layer. And what the drainage layer actually does is it kind of acts like a water table. Uh, if you know anything about water movements in the water system, water cycle. Uh, it kind of acts like a, a hydro table underneath, or water table underneath. There's a lot of water that kind of sits underground. This is where trees usually will get their water source. Um, a lot of trees people don't specifically water, but the tree is still healthy and doing fine, and that's because it's getting water resources from deep underground in that water table. So this is kind of what this is acting as. Uh, when you have this, it just means as you know, a misting system or as you water this, keep this moist, all that excess water that's running down will go into the soil primarily. And then anything that's extra excess that drains out of the soil will go into the drainage layer. The reason this is important is because you don't want your plants to sit in stagnant water. So you do want it, the water to be able to drain into something. So the water will drain down here and then your plants will be up into the soil layer. What you're seeing me do now is put in this mesh window screen, which I did cut slightly um, crooked. So I'm correcting that now. But what this window screen is, it's made of carbon fiber mesh and it is safe to put in your tank. And what it basically does is keep the soil from getting into the drainage layer. This is important again, because you don't want your plants sitting in that stagnant water that's gonna end up down below. So what this does is it just protects your plants and kind of keeps the soil out of the drainage layer. So you do have a true water table sitting in place. And that's essentially the start to the bioactive enclosure. You just add your preferred um, soil mix from there on. For tropical, there are a great variety of mixes that people have made themselves. There's professional mixes, there's pre-made stuff you can buy, there's things you can buy as ingredients and mix it yourself. I mix my own with you know a variety of ingredients. So for that reason, just to be clear, this is my ingredient list. I'll put it on the screen because whenever I tend to say it verbally, I always end up forgetting one ingredient or two. So what I recommend when you first put it in because your liner might be like curling up or bunching up, put a chunk of soil in each corner and that'll kind of weigh it down for when you do the rest. Soil's all in, I'll let you take a look at that. I barely, barely, barely made it. I almost ran out of topsoil, uh, but the, that's the good thing about when you have a mixture because you can kind of add in a little extra of some stuff if you're running out of other things. So everything is there. Let's get to planting. I have a variety of plants all picked up from hardware stores. I didn't purchase anything from anywhere special. And basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna strip the plants down. They've been in quarantine for like a month now. Uh, I'm gonna strip them down to just their roots and then I'm just gonna kind of lay them around in the enclosure until I find something that I love. Okay, so now as you can see, 
it's all laid out nothing is rooted or planted basically I tried to fill it up as much as I can of course all of these plants will either um, die off just due to adjustment or they will adjust and thrive and grow and fill in these spaces so in general I tried to keep taller stuff toward the back although I did have a hard time because some of these logs are kind of getting in the way there but I did try to put taller stuff in the back shorter stuff in the front and then I did put a couple medium plants that just kind of disperse out toward the front just to keep you know heights variety this is what it looks like now all planted um, I'm not very good with plant names but I remember the names of plants that work all the time and that is pothos so this is a pothos right here I have the pothos up in that corner the reason I like a pothos is because they are one of the hardiest plants um, they can tolerate dry conditions and very wet conditions so they're very easy to they're basically will go in a variety of terrariums and that's why I like them I can pretty much plant them in any terrarium so before you add beneficial insects there's a couple things you can do to prep for them one is actually having cork on the bottom somewhere if you have you know cork up top that's great but these are insects they are gonna be on the ground and insects really do well when they have some cork to breed on and be around so you might not be able to see it but I do have a really big cork piece right here it's wedged into the ground partially because I have higher soil in the back so it's like a little retaining wall but it's also for the insects and so I'm gonna actually put a second piece in just to add some interest but also spots for the insects to hang out and then secondly the something the thing you want to add is a leaf litter layer on top Leaf litter, even if you don't do insects and you're not doing bioactive, if you do a naturalistic setup with soil, I would still do leaf litter. Leaf litter holds in moisture in the soil very, very well. So it does kind of um, lengthen the amount of time between waterings for the bottom section here. So leaf litter just insulates. It also provides food and hiding spots for those insects. So there's different types of leaf litter. The one I use is the magnolia leaves. The other most common one is oak leaves. I can't get those for whatever reason they don't ship to where I live so I have the magnolia leaves they work just fine they are a little larger in size but I just crumble them up as needed but because this tank is larger I'll probably leave them the full size and one last extra thing you can do to really spice up your enclosure besides the leaf litter also beneficial to those insects and it just makes it look good because remember the more textures and things you include the messier honestly you end up making it the better and that's seed pods so I have a variety of seed pods here um, I have like a bell pod I have this little uh, magnolia seed thing I have this big split seed pod so I just put these in and disperse them again they add hiding spots breeding grounds and in cases of like the bell pod another you know like this one where it has a lot of nooks and crannies uh, it also helps hold water and water retention which provides moisture overall helps boost humidity and just creates little water pockets for insects to get to as well as your animals is your setup all finished good because it's not bioactive until you add the bugs so we are gonna go ahead and add our bugs now I mainly just go with two types and it's the two most common types but people will also add things like mealworms and the 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 eventual beetles which are darkling beetles you could add super worms there are people who do the blue blue fainting beetles um, I, I wouldn't do roaches but some people do depending on the species of roach though that's the thing um, you could also do different kinds of, of worms and small just beneficial insects people do centipedes and millipedes uh, I will occasionally do like earthworms down here in the bottom this one didn't have any to begin with and I don't think it'll need any in the beginning here so I'm not gonna add them unless I see a need for it so there's tons of things you can add to be beneficial but the two most 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 common that you're going to see are the springtails which are kind of a must everyone does springtails and the number one choice for the second option which is isopods which are roly-polies so I'm gonna be adding just springtails and isopods today that's really all I had in here before in that old cage and it worked just fine so I'm just gonna reseed and establish this one and let the bugs do their thing so first springtails springtails are very very tiny I've only seen white springtails I've heard they can be you know tan and brown in color 
but springtails are very tiny and honestly once you add springtails in your enclosure you're not likely to see them so if bugs do creep you out and you really want to take the step to bioactive at minimum I would just start with springtails like I said you're not going to see them once you put them in unless you put food in you might see them around the food so what do springtails and other cleanup crew actually do? They will basically eat your le animal's leftover feces, uh, decaying plant matter, other decaying stuff. They'll eat mold, they'll eat leftover food. This is why they're called a cleanup crew because they will eat all the stuff that you actually don't want remaining in your tank. And they will recycle that and turn it into beneficial you know, fertilizers and um, bacterias that your plants can then take in as nutrients and help your plants thrive. Even though I'm doing isopods, I do also like to try to add a variety of isopod because even then, isopods do different things. So a really good starting point is to use isopods and springtails. And that is a completed bioactive vivarium. We do need to add lights up top and the animals of course, but I need to kind of take some special time to do that because it's transferring from an old enclosure. You know, I'm not just setting this up and then throwing in a new animal. I have to be careful about what I take because right now they are still in the old enclosure and they need their lighting. So I have to move them both over at once. But this is set up, so I'm gonna let it sit for a couple days, um, maybe more, let it really establish before introducing the new animals. And what I do want to say is there sometimes is some panic that does happen when people first set up a bioactive enclosure. So let me clarify a couple things. Um, mushrooms are very common in newly established enclosures. Uh, usually they will look white or yellow. They'll pop up overnight. And if you ever see it from the bottom here from the side, you'll first see them growing there and it'll be like yellow spotted and it really looks like mold. And then overnight you'll have just mushrooms popping up. It's not a big deal. Those mushrooms are safe and they'll go away within 24 hours. It's part of the cycle and it's just showing that you actually have a healthy setup because when you get mushrooms, it just means you have an overabundance of nutrients, which is really common in new setups because it's fresh soils, fresh plants. And so they'll go away within 24 hours and then over time you shouldn't get any more mushrooms. Mold is also very, very common, especially when a tank is not established. You're putting in a lot of moisture all, all in at once because you're trying to keep the plants happy. Uh, but the wood and all the soil and the leaves are all, basically they've been dried out for so long that once you start suddenly adding water because you have plants, it just creates a moist environment and you're gonna have a mold outbreak. But to prevent that, that's why you have a cleanup crew and so you're less likely to get mold outbreaks when you have cleanup crew. Same thing with mushrooms, cleanup crew will eat that too. So, but it's completely normal to have a, a little bit of mold in the beginning and a little bit of mushrooms in the beginning and you're also free to clean both if you so choose. Also, it's normal to have plants die off or appear dying before coming back. Plants have to go through an adjustment period so that sometimes plants will appear to die off before coming back because it's basically the plants just adjusting and it will look, you know, wilted or it might brown up a little bit. And that's it guys. I feel like I didn't give you much information but, um, I, it's always kind of busy when you're building and talking at the same time, so I hope this helps. You're always free to leave me comments in the comment section. And if you want to stick around and see some of the other stuff I'll be making and doing, I do post videos every Friday and it's very helpful if you do subscribe. It means a lot to me. So thank you for watching this episode and I will see you next week. Bye!